Crypto is a $2 trillion asset class. Are you willing to admit you missed something? Well, I certainly didn't invest in crypto. <laughs> I'm proud of the fact I've avoided it. It's like, you know, some venereal disease or something. I just regard it as beneath contempt. Some people think it's modernity and they welcome a currency that's so useful in extortions and kidnappings and so on and so on, tax evasion. And, and of course, the envy, everybody has to create his own new currency. And I think that's crazy too. So I'm, I'm not having any, I wish it had been banned immediately. And I admire the Chinese for banning it. I think they were right and we, we've been wrong to allow it. Mr. Munger, you've been warning of the evil, evils of cryptocurrency in the past. How do you feel about the Federal Reserve preparing to launch a central bank digital currency? Do you think that this will be beneficial or harmful to the strength and resilience of our markets? No, no, the Federal Reserve could have a currency if they want one. That, that would be just a, we've got a digital currency already. It's called a bank account. <laughs> the banks are all integrated with the Federal Reserve system. We already have a digital currency. He's interested in your take on China and Chinese stock exposure for the long term. He says it's becoming quite evident that Chinese companies could be banned from doing business in the Western world or maybe some of the Eastern countries too because of the number of the following reasons. One, the security threat issues. Two, the potential conflict over Taiwan. Three, inability to meet Western accounting standards. And number four, human rights issues. Considering all of the risks mentioned above, why would anyone as smart as Munger or Buffett consider investing in China or any of the Chinese companies? Well, we did it for a very simple reason. We got more strength per dollar invested. In China, the, the companies we invest in are stronger relative to their competition and priced lower. That's why we're in China. China is uninvestable, in my opinion, at this point. I've never invested in China long or short. Why is that? I don't trust the data. I don't trust the relationship between the United States and China anymore. I think that investments in China could be confiscated. I think there's a risk of that." End quote. Obviously, with a significant percentage of the Daily Journal's marketable securities invested in BYD and Alibaba, you feel differently. Please explain why you are right. Well. Of course, only the future knows who's going to be right. But China is a big modern nation. It's got this huge population and this huge mo modernity that's come in the last 30 years. And we invested some money in China because we could get more value in terms of the strength of the enterprise and the price of the security than we could get in the United States. Other people, including Sequoia, the leading venture capital firm in the United States, have made the same decision we have. But I'm sympathetic to Gunn, like if, he, if he's nervous, he doesn't have to join us. Different, different folks have different opinions. I feel about Russia the way he feels about China. I don't invest in Russia, so I, I can't criticize Gunlock's point of view. It's just I reach a different conclusion. Daily Journal owner, do we own local shares of Alibaba? Does that actually give us legal ownership of that business, or do we have a variable interest, and is that the same? Net net, what do we own? And I did get a series of questions related to that same uh, sort of uh, sort of thought. When you buy Alibaba, you do get a sort of a derivative, but assuming there's a reasonable honor among civilized nations, uh, that risk doesn't seem all that big to me. Although the financials seem strong, do the political pressures from the Chinese government worry you um, at all? Well, the Chinese government is worrying all the capitalists in the world way more than it used to. And of course we don't like that. And we wish that China and the United States got along better. And if you stop to think about it, think of how massively stupid both China and the United States have been to allow the existing tensions to arise. What bad is ever gonna happen to China or the United States if, if we two are close? If we make good friends out of the Chinese and vice versa, who in the hell is ever gonna bother us? Of course we should make friends with China. And of course we should learn to get along with people who have a different system of government. It, we like our government because we're used to it and it has advantages of personal freedom. China could never have handled its life with a government like ours. They wouldn't. They wouldn't be in the position they've, they're in. 
They had to prevent 500 million or 600 million people from being born in China. They just measured the women's menstrual periods when they came to work and aborted those who who weren't allowed to have children. You can't do that in the United States. And it really needed doing in China. And so they did what they had to do using their methods. And I don't think we should be criticizing China, which, which has terrible problems, because they're not just like the United States. They do some things better than we do. They should like us, and we should like them. So I'm, I'm totally, I think nothing is crazier than people who foment resentments on either side of that one. As Charlie, Alibaba is a top three holding for you. It sells at a steep discount to its U.S. peers. Best comparable is Amazon, which is triple Alibaba's P.E. So what discount should, should U.S. investors seek when buying Chinese stocks, considering the political, regulatory, and especially the ownership structure risk? Oh, and, and considering the fortune Berkshire made on your BYD suggestion, why doesn't Buffett buy Alibaba? Warren, like many other intelligent people, likes to invest where he's personally comfortable. And for some reason, I'm more comfortable with the Chinese than he is. That's a minor difference. And But I have all kinds of places where I'm just like Warren. I have all kinds of things where I'm not comfortable. And I just don't go near them. I think an old guy is entitled to invest where he wants to invest. What makes you uncomfortable? What do you not It's OK here? to have some things that you just don't want to bother with. I don't think Alibaba is as entrenched as something like Apple and Alphabet. I think the internet is going to be a very competitive place even if you're a big internet retailer.